The Directory was the government of France during the penultimate stage of the French Revolution, administered by a collective leadership of five directors. It operated following the Committee of Public Safety and preceding the Consulate. It lasted from 2 November 1795 until 10 November 1799, a period commonly known as the Directory Era. It was overthrown by Napoleon. The Directory at first had some success in foreign policy, especially right after Napoleon's conquests in Italy. Also it annexed Belgium and the left bank of the Rhine River, and set up satellite regimes in Switzerland, the Netherlands, and most of Italy. The conquered lands were forced to provide huge subsidies to the French treasury, which otherwise was bankrupt. On the domestic front, however, conditions went from bad to worse and the directory responded with repression. The period was a time of economic depression in France, with famines and widespread distress following the crop failure of 1795. Inflation was raging as the paper money was worth less than 1% of its face value. There was a major civil war in the Vendée region. The army crushed it by massacring thousands of civilians, often by drowning. The government suppressed its critics, their clubs and the newspapers. It and executed Gracchus Bayboff, the chief spokesman for the poor. The war of the first coalition against Britain and its allies dragged on at great expense, and with an unpopular conscription of young men. In 1799 the enemies of France scored a series of major victories, pushing the French back to their borders. The bright spot seemingly was Napoleon's highly successful campaigns, but when he invaded Egypt, the British sank his fleet and his army became trapped, while the armies still in Europe suffered a series of defeats in 1799. The Directory had very little popular or elite support left. Napoleon returned to Paris and overthrew the Directory on November 9, 1799. Historians have generally been negative about the Directory. Palmer says, the Directory became a kind of ineffective dictatorship. It repudiated most of the assignates, paper money, and the debt but failed to restore financial confidence or stability. Guerrilla activity flared up again in the Vendée and other parts of western France. The religious schism became more acute. The Directory took severe measures toward the refractory clergy, those who would not swear allegiance to the government. It was a government of self-interest rather than virtue, thus losing any claim on idealism. It never had a strong base of popular support. When elections were held, most of its candidates were defeated. Historians have been quite negative on the Directory's use of military force to overturn election returns that went against them. Blue Mayal argue, having by this coup d'acute-tat forfeited its claim to be a constitutional government. The Directory henceforth clung to power only by such illegal acts as purges and quashed elections. Overall its achievements were minor, though it did establish administrative procedures and financial reforms that worked out well when Napoleon started using them. Brown stresses the turn toward dictatorship and the failure of liberal democracy under the Directory, blaming it for chronic violence ambivalent forms of justice, and repeated recourse to heavy-handed repression. Directoire style refers to the neoclassical styles in architecture, the decorative arts and high society fashions that flourished during the period. Origins In the first half of 1794 during the Revolution, the new French Republic was convulsed in civil and foreign wars. On 9 Thermidor Year 2, deputies in the National Convention delivered a counter-strike, arresting and executing Robespierre along with Louis Antoine de Saint-Just, Georges Cuthon, and many others. Their removal from power, and the subsequent divergence of the revolution's course, is known historically as the Thermidorian reaction. The demand for change was so great, it necessitated a reformation of the entire system of government. The original constitution of Year I, now permanently discredited by its origin among Jacobins, was quickly replaced by a new document. 
the Constitution of Year 3. This dissolved the National Convention and established a unique new governmental system for France, a bicameral legislature led by a five-member, directoire executive. Constitution of Year 3. Under this new constitution, qualified property holders elected 750 legislators, who divided themselves into the Council of 500 and the Council of Ancients. This bicameral legislature had a term of three years, with one-third of the members renewed every year. The ancients held a suspensory veto, but possessed no initiative in legislation. The constitution specified the executive as consisting of five directors, chosen by the ancients out of a list sent to them by the 500. One director faced retirement each year. Ministers for the various departments of state aided the directors. These ministers did not form a council or cabinet and had no general powers of government. The system made provision for the stringent control of all local authorities by the central government. Since the new constitution sought to create a separation of powers, the directors had no voice in legislation or taxation, nor could directors or ministers sit in either house. The law guaranteed freedom of religion, freedom of the press, and freedom of labor, but for bad armed assemblies and even public meetings of political societies, only individuals or public authorities could tender petitions. From the beginning, however, circumstances restricted the free play of the Constitution. The Convention had acquired so much unpopularity that, if its members had retired into private life, they would have risked the undoing of their work. There was still support for a more conservative government in Western France, and others with political aims who had lost opportunities in the preceding years. The convention was also wary of the tumult that had ushered their rise to power. Therefore, a decree required that two-thirds of the first legislature must come from among the members of the convention. This had the effect of making it difficult and useless for voters to choose alternative candidates. When the constitution went before the primary assemblies, most electors held aloof, 1,057,000 voting for and 49,000 voting against it, and on 23 September it officially became law. Then all the parties which resented the limit upon freedom of election combined in Paris to rise in revolt. The government entrusted its defence to Paris. But on 13 Vendamia the young general Napoleon Bonaparte quelled attacks by large numbers of ill-equipped and ill-led Parisian insurgents with her few thousand regular troops and well-placed artillery. After the selection of the Council of the Ancients by lot, it remained to name the directors. For its own security the left resolved that all five must be old members of the convention and regicides who voted to execute King Louis XVI. The ancients chose Jean-François Rubel, Paul-François-Jean-Nicolas, Vicomte de Barris, Louis-Marie de la Ravelière Aleppo, Lazare Nicolas Marguerite Carnot, and Étienne-François Latourneur. Notoriety of the Directory With the establishment of the Directory, the revolution seemed on the verge of ending. The nation was tired of the violence of the terror and needed time to recover. Wallach says that the Directory expected to operate a quiet, non-controversial government but that was never possible because the terror had left a dual legacy that made such normalcy impossible. On the one hand massive disengagement, apathy, and cynicism about government, on the other hand rancorous. Violent hostility between the politically engaged minorities of royalists and Jacobins, between whom the directorial moderates vainly attempted to navigate, legality became the main casualty in this situation. The four years of the directory were a time of chronic disquiet and the late atrocities had made goodwill between parties impossible. The same instinct of self-preservation which had led the members of the convention to claim so large a part in the new legislature and the whole of the directory impelled them to keep their predominance. War was at the centre of attention, not only for the survival of France but for the loot and forced payments into the French treasury. The supply of the army was taken out of the hands of the bureaucracy and given to private contractors. 
who made large fortunes through payoffs that highlighted the regime's tolerance of corruption. As a majority of the population wanted to be rid of them, the Directory could survive only by illegal means. They disregarded the terms of the Constitution, and, when the elections went against them, they used the army to suppress the winners. The army became increasingly powerful inside France. The state finances had been so thoroughly ruined that the government could not have met its expenses without the plunder and the tribute of foreign conquests. The Constitutional Party and the legislature desired toleration of the non-during clergy, the repeal of the laws against the relatives of the émigre, and some merciful discrimination toward the émigres themselves. The directors firmly oppose any compromises with monarchists. Babeuf's conspiracy as the economy worsened unrest grew Babeuf organized his conspiracy of the equals. Babeuf had, since 1789, been drawn to the agrarian law, or sharing goods in common, as means of achieving economic equality. By the time of Robespierre's fall he had abandoned this as an impractical scheme and was moving towards a more complex plan of collective ownership and production. This, in essence, was still his ultimate aim when, in winter of 1795-96, he conspired with a group of former Jacobins, clubmen and terrorists to overthrow the Directory by force. The movement was organized in a series of concentric circles. There was an inner insurrectionary committee, composed of a small body of intimates who alone were fully informed of the conspiracy's aims beyond it, a group of sympathizers, ex-Jacobins and others, including Robes Pierre's old opponents, Amar and Lindit, and finally, on the fringe, the Paris militants who had been won over, reckoned by Babeuf at some 17,000 men. The plan was original and grievance was rife but the sans culottes, cowed and silenced since Prairial, failed to respond. The conspirators were betrayed by a police spy to Carnot, a director who was moving to the right. On the night of 23-24 Fructidor their partisans attempted to win over the soldiers of the camp of Grenelle. Carnot was aware of their plan and they were surprised by the cavalry. 131 were arrested and 30 shot out of hand. The principal Babeuf associates were brought to trial. Babeuf and Dar they were guillotined. War in the Vendée and Vendée. Peasants revolted against the French Revolutionary Government in 1793. They resented the changes imposed on the Roman Catholic Church by the civil constitution of the clergy and broke into open revolt in defiance of the Revolutionary Government's military conscription of young men into the army. This became a guerrilla war, known as the War in the Vendée. North of the Loire, similar revolts were started by the so-called Chouans. The revolt and its suppression, including both combat casualties and massacres and executions on both sides, are thought to have taken between 117,000 and 250,000 lives. Because of the extremely brutal forms that the Republican repression took in many places, Certain historians such as Reynolds Secker have called the event a genocide. This description has become popular in the mass media, but has largely been rejected by mainstream scholars. Furet concludes that the repression in the Vendée not only revealed massacre and destruction on an unprecedented scale, but also a zeal so violent that it has bestowed as its legacy much of the region's identity, facing local revolts and foreign invasions in both the east and west of the country. The most urgent government business was the war. On 17 August, the convention voted for general conscription, the Levee en masse, which mobilized all citizens to serve as soldiers or suppliers in the war effort. Military successors However, the Directory was sustained by the military successes of 1796. Hoche again suppressed the revolt in the Vendée. Bonaparte's victories in Italy more than compensated for the reverses of Jordan and Moro in Germany. The King of Sardinia made peace in May 1796, ceding Nice and Savoy to the French Republic and consenting to receive French garrisons in his Piedmontese fortresses. 
By the Treaty of San Ildefonso, concluded in August, Spain became the ally of France. In October 1796, the Kingdom of Naples made peace. Bonaparte finished the conquest of northern Italy and forced Austria to make the Treaty of Campo Formio, whereby the Emperor ceded Lombardy and the Austrian Netherlands to the French Republic in exchange for Venice and urged the Diet to surrender the lands beyond the Rhine. Notwithstanding the victory of Cape St. Vincent, the United Kingdom was brought into such extreme peril by the mutinies in its fleet that it offered to acknowledge the French conquest of the Netherlands and to restore the French colonies. The selfishness of the three directors threw away this golden opportunity. In March and April, the election of a new third of the councils had been held. It gave a majority to the Constitutional Party. Among the directors, the lot fell on Le Tourneur to retire and he was succeeded by Barthélemy, an eminent diplomatist, who allied himself with Carnot. The political disabilities imposed upon the relatives of émigrés were repealed. Priests who would declare their submission to the Republic were restored to their rights as citizens. It seemed likely that peace would be made and that moderate men would gain power. 18 Fructidor When the Directory held its first elections in Germinal in order to find replacement for the first third of the deputies, including the so-called Perpetuals members, the Directorials were crushed in all but a dozen departments. Only 11 former deputies from the Convention were re-elected, several of whom were Royalists. Republican majority maintained by the two-thirds law disappeared. Royalists took control of the assemblies. General Picagru presided over the 500 and Barbe Marbois over the ancients. They voted for the abolition of the law of three Brume a year IV repressing refractory priests. Emigres had started to return, taking advantage of being struck off the lists which made them liable to the death penalty under conventions laws. Meanwhile, emboldened by directorial passivity the right resolved to emasculate it by depriving it of all its financial powers. The conflict between the directory and the councils entered a crucial phase when majority of the directors made their mind and abandoned their stance. Of watchful caution, number of resolute appointments were made including Hoche to war ministry. It was especially revealing since for ten days the Sambaremu's army under Hoche's command had been marching on Paris. Paris, Rubel, and La Ravalier Aleppo then sought help from the army. They accused the royalists of seeking to restore monarchy and to undo the work of the revolution. Hoche, then in command of the army of Sambaremu's, visited Paris and sent troops. Bonaparte sent General Augereau, who designed the coup d'acute TAT. On 18 Fructidor Year V, Paris was placed under a military occupation. There was no resistance, and a decree stated that all those who wished to bring about the re-establishment of the monarchy would be shot on the spot. The elections were annulled in 49 departments, 177 deputies were removed and 65 were sentenced to dry guillotine, deportation to Guyana. 42 newspapers were suppressed and repressive measures against emigres and priests were re-implemented. The councils were purged, the elections in 49 departments were cancelled, and many deputies and other men of note were arrested. Some of them, including Barthélemy, Picagru, Barbe Marbois and Lafondelay debate were deported to K.N. Carnot made good his escape. The two vacant places in the directory were filled by Merlin de Douai and Nicolas Louis Francois de Neuf Chateau. Then the government frankly returned to Jacobin methods. The law against the relatives of emigres was re enacted, and military tribunals were established to condemn any emigres caught in France. The non-juring priests were again persecuted. Many hundreds were either sent to K.N. or imprisoned in the hulks of old ships. La Ravalier Aleppo seized the opportunity to propagate his religion. Many churches were turned into theophilanthropic temples. The government strained its power to secure the recognition of the decade as the day of public worship and the non-observance of Sunday. Liberty of the press ceased. 
newspapers were confiscated and journalists were deported wholesale. It was proposed to banish from France all members of the old aristocracy. Although the proposal was dropped, they were all declared to be foreigners and were forced to obtain naturalization if they would enjoy the rights of other citizens.